Hi there everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So I have here about 60 grams of gold foil that I made from a gold bar which I produced in another video from some scrap gold jewelry I bought on eBay. Now a lot of people when they saw that gold bar and especially when they saw how the foil acts, they deduced that it contained a small amount of copper contamination. Uh, this is most likely due to the fact that I processed the uh, gold very quickly, I was in a hurry and I must have brought down a lot of copper uh, in the precipitation process. Fortunately, I now have this x-ray gun here, and I can actually x-ray it and see exactly how pure I was able to get it. Okay, so I'll do a quick alloy test there. Let's uh, zoom in on this so we can see. All right, so there we are. We do indeed have about 2.5% copper. And uh, going down, it's about 95, around 96% gold. So, yeah, it's about 23 carats. Yeah, I certainly could have done a lot better. A tiny bit of palladium. It's not terrible, though, for a first pass. Anyway, you might notice that the gold is showing up under W for tungsten. Uh, that is just a, a software thing. That's not actually a hardware issue. Uh, under this mode, gold just shows up as tungsten because that's the closest the uh, software can read the peak as. Uh, it's not, uh, gold isn't one of the elements it has loaded for this uh, mode here. I'll probably do a video on that at some point. So anyway, we have 23 carats gold, and I'd like to get this up to 24 carats, or at least as close to pure as I can. So let's re-refine it. So in order to separate the metals, I must first dissolve the gold into solution so that I can separate the metals. Normally this is done with a mixture of nitric acid and hydrochloric acid, otherwise known as ocariga. And what's, that's what I've normally done in the past, but there are a lot of problems with it. And so I wanted to try another method, and that is using the uh, halides, uh, like elemental chlorine as the oxidizing agent. So. Uh, you know, that's the total amount of gold, so it's 1.7 moles. Uh, I am going to do this in batches, so we will reduce that number. I don't want to do all my gold all at once on an untested process. So, uh, this is the equation for the dissolution. Elemental chlorine, elemental gold, little hydrochloric acid, and it dissolves it, makes the aurum chloric acid. Now, I think... Uh, uh, I was talking to some Patreons, and we decided that uh, it might actually be better to use uh, bromine instead of chlorine. So just re replace the Cl with Br, and the equation should be the same. Uh, I was going to make the chlorine using uh, calcium hypochlorate. We may actually use calcium hypochlorate in order to produce the bromine, but there we go. I weighed out uh, 205 grams, so this is 2 moles of sodium bromide. This won't make enough bromine to dissolve all of my gold, but it'll certainly dissolve this and probably the next batch as well. So, there's the sodium bromide. I'm going to add enough water to this to get it to dissolve. So now that the sodium bromide is mostly dissolved and I've got a better light going, let's add in 60 milliliters of sulfuric acid slowly so it's not to heat up the solution too much. And this will form uh, sodium sulfate, which uh, some will precipitate, not all. Cooling it off will further precipitate the sodium sulfate and drive the reaction forming uh, hydrobromic acid in solution. While I'm waiting for that to cool, I may as well cut this uh, gold into little pieces that are small enough to fit down the neck of a reaction flask. A lot of the sodium sulfate has precipitated out now that it's cooled. This leaves us hydrobromic acid in solution. Of course, it's very crude, so I'm going to first filter it and then distill the acid to get uh, pure hydrobromic acid. Okay, so here we are. I've got it set up for a simple distillation. A fractional distillation column would achieve a higher purity, but uh, I'm okay if I'm getting a dilute acid. I just want to get an acid that doesn't have all the sodium and stuff in it. Okay, looks like it's done. And I've got some hydrobromic acid. And the leftover sodium sulfate. Okay, so now's when it's getting fun. Got the fan going. Looking out over my notes. 
This is the equation we're going to be using, except we're replacing this with hydrobromic acid, and it'll produce uh, bromine instead of chlorine. And so I've weighed out 100 grams of calcium uh, hypochlorate. Theoretically, I'd only need about 70 grams, but it's very impure, and uh, basically I'm adding an excess, so I make sure I oxidize all of the bromine. Theoretically, any oxidizer could be used, you know, strong oxidizers. The hydrogen peroxide I tried, and it did kind of work, but it really liked to froth up. So uh, I'm just going to use this. So let's uh, reattach all of my distillation equipment. I'm going to put a dropping funnel up on top here. That's where I'm going to put the hydrobromic acid. And we should get bromine distilling over. Okay, we're just about ready. Distillation apparatus is set up. We've got a bottle of frozen milk in the cooling water. Keep it cold. We've got a uh, scrubber with some uh, sodium hydroxide here to get the uh, bromine vapors. But of course, I'm also doing this in a fume hood. So anything that doesn't catch will just get sucked right outside. So here we go. Let's add in the hydrobromic acid to the calcium hypochlorate. And we should see bromine forming. There it is. <laughs> I'm just going to add it very slowly. Uh, I'll probably end up with a bunch of liquid bromine in this chamber over here. But I do have it set up in this uh, distillation pot so I can heat this up and drive it over if it doesn't produce enough heat. Okay. There's the bromine. So you'll probably catch it on the time lapse because it was going. But I was thinking that maybe the calcium chlorate, hyperchlorate, was uh, being used up because the bromine stopped coming over even though liquid was going in. And so I decided to open this up and put a little bit more calcium chlorate in, hyperchlorate in there to test it. And it turns out I was right. And a bunch of uh, bromine vapor came out at me. But fortunately, fume hood just took care of it, no problem. <laughs> See, that, that's what this thing is for, those occasional accidents. I want to try to avoid releasing gases as much as possible, but you know, occasionally when something like that happens, you know, it's nice to not have it go out into the room. So all of, it's, all of the uh, acid is in, I've got the uh, heating mantle on, mm -hmm. the bromine's still coming over. It looks like quite a bit. I think I'm going to get a pretty good yield out of this. Obviously not 100%, but all right. Got the bromine in my little Nile Red flask. Let's use it to dissolve some gold. So I'm putting in the gold now. I have uh, 65 grams of gold here. And uh, I'm just going to put all of the bromine in. That way I have an excess. And any leftover bromine I can just uh, boil back out. That's what's nice about the uh, halides, is you don't have to evaporate it dry. Just simply raising the temperature will drive the, the halide off. Should I add a stir bar? Yeah, I guess it really wouldn't hurt. Now I'm going to add some muriatic acid, or hydrochloric. I'm just going to add enough to cover the gold, which should be in excess. And now for the bromine. see what's going on. It's not bubbling or frothing or anything. It shouldn't make any gas. It's another bonus of this process. Let's pick this up so you can see what it looks like from underneath. Yeah, you can see the liquid bromine in there. Sitting down on the gold. Okay, presumably the gold's in there being dissolved. It's currently almost 2 a.m. So I'll let this go overnight. I've got the stirring turned on. I don't think the stir bar is actually moving. But we'll come back in the morning and see if everything's liquid. So I was still up and I decided to come check on this before I actually went to bed. So it's been just over an hour. And I noticed something. Look at that. It's actually stirring. See a little vortex in there? 
know what that means? It means this gold has been dissolved to the point that the stir bar works. Here, I want to actually look at and see what that gold looks like right now. Okay, so I've taken the flask out so we can look at it. And the first thing I notice is that it's rather warm. It's not quite hot enough to boil the bromine, but it's, it's heated up a little bit. And I don't have the uh, heating mantle on, so that's all heat just from the dissolving gold. So I guess uh, dissolving a larger quantity might be a problem. So it's good that I started with a small batch. But look at this. It's like some just shredded pieces of gold left. It's almost completely gone. That is crazy. That dissolved it faster than the uh, nitric acid would have. I mean, it does help that it was in a thin foil, but even still, that is remarkably fast. I was not expecting that. All right, well, I need to go sleep. So here we are after I've taken a long nap. The gold is completely dissolved. So let's uh, turn on the heating mantle and let's drive off the rest of the bromine. We should collect the excess down in that bulb there. There it goes. The bromine's leaving. <laughs> Once that's gone, I'll be able to drop the gold out of solution. You see, with the nitric acid, I'd have to evaporate it down until it's a syrup, add more hydrochloric acid, and do that again and again just to get rid of all the acid. This is so much better. <laughs> and here we are. The extra bromine is right here. Let's take this. Let's go run this through a filter. <laughs> looks lovely, don't it? Finish rinsing this uh, gold through the filter. There we are. All the insolubles are now captured. And uh, what we got in the liquid is probably mostly gold and uh, copper chlorides. Uh, the next task is to do that probably about five more times. And just like that, all the gold has been dissolved. This uh, flask here contains around 1300 milliliters of solution, which is probably worth over $10 a milliliter. Isn't that crazy? We're in the home stretch now though. Let's get this converted into metal. Got a gas generator over here that'll make uh, sulfur dioxide by dropping hydrochloric acid onto sodium metabisulfate. Got a glass tube here to put the gas into the solution. And this will reduce the gold to metallic form. But hopefully it will not reduce the copper. Turn that to the bottom. Let's add in the sulfur dioxide. There we go. Go through a little at a time and at some point we should see metallic gold forming. So here we are. You can see I've added a bunch of the gas. Oh well, you can see. But there is a bunch of gold powder settling out of the solution. Still got a long ways to go though. Now that the gold has been successfully converted back into metallic form, I've washed it with some uh, pure water and uh, right now I'm putting it onto a little pan so that I can dry it out. So here's the gold powder after being dried. One interesting thing about this is it still feels heavy even though I've removed the water weight. Which I guess makes sense because gold is very dense. Let me get this onto this paper here. Let's do it some at a time. 
transfer it into this crucible so I can melt it down. The sand and the floor and everything's going to be a valuable gold ore by the time I'm done, isn't it? <laughs> I'll probably do a video at some point about recovering the gold from the floor. <laughs> Like for instance, this paper here. I'm gonna put that with my other gold containing paper and gloves. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, this uh, cylinder in the back here is where I put all the wash water and the solution that didn't drop out. So it's got copper, but presumably a small amount of gold. Actually, it's probably quite a bit of gold. So I just put in some zinc, some zinc powder, and that'll help uh, precipitate the rest of the gold. Right, here we go. Let's melt this down. Now that the furnace is up to temperature, I'm gonna light a torch and heat up the mold. This way, the gold will lay flat and not solidify instantly. Make a nice rectangular bar. On this side, let's pour out the gold. Let's hit this with a torch a little bit and blow away some of that uh, dirt that fell on it. So, there it is. Nice little bar of gold. <laughs> it looks a lot better now, don't it? Look at the size of the crystals in the front. That is an indicator of purity, I think. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's some uh, crud that fell onto it, I think from the inside of the furnace, you know, off the lid. I tried to blow most of it off with the torch, but you know, it's still there. I can probably get it a little bit of sandpaper though. But I'm not sure if I want to sandpaper it. It looks pretty as is, right? <laughs> Well, let's go x-ray it and see how pure it is. Okay, time for the moment of truth. Let's hit this with the x-ray. Okay, so you saw the whole process. That's just a quick alloy check. You can see 98.88. So still not you know, four nines or anything, but certainly a lot pure. Looks like a tiny bit of cadmium, lead, bismuth, palladium. Yeah, still didn't get the palladium out, but there's no copper. That's definitely important. So now it won't be as well red in its color. <laughs> There it is. Just for fun, let's also check one of these uh, commercially made gold bars, which uh, should be at least three nines fine. So, set it on there. Let's check it. Okay, it is done. Let's bring this down. And yeah, it's telling me that it's 100% pure. Yeah, which makes sense. Now for the question I'm sure a lot of you are asking, how much does this gold bar weigh? So on the scale, 304 grams, so just under 10 troy ounces. 
And obviously that is a bit lighter than the 11 troy ounce uh, bar that I started with. A lot of that of course is copper. And also, uh, since I was going for purity, I didn't recover all of the gold in one step. You know, there's still quite a bit that was left over which I cemented out with the zinc, which I'm currently recovering. Probably get quite a bit uh, of gold out of that. But of course I'll have to re-refine it to get to this purity. But at any rate, this is pure enough now that I think I feel okay flattening it out once again and adding it to my uh, gold foil ball. But I'll probably uh, do that in another video or something. So now I'll leave you guys with a spreadsheet showing the amount that I spent and theoretically could make by selling the gold, uh, now adjusted for the fact that it was 95% pure. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.